Hi, I'm Dr. Keith Volstad. And I'm Laura McLeod Volstad of Volstad Chiropractic and Integrated Wellness. We are located at 275 Tony Penna Drive, Suite 12, right here in Jupiter. And our telephone number is 746-4242. We'd like to welcome you to this week's edition of the Chiropractic Corner, a weekly show spotlighting the chiropractic profession and what doctors of chiropractic do to improve their patients' health. In this program, Dr. Volstad and I plan to cover topics that pertain to your health from a complementary and alternative medicine point of view. These topics will include spinal injury issues like neck pain, low back pain, bulging discs, pinched nerves, and sports injuries, lifestyle medicine, dietary and nutritional advice, nutraceuticals, and supplementation, just to name a few. We'd like to encourage you to email us about topics that you'd like to hear discussed on this program. You can do that by emailing us at imchiro1, the number one, at gmail.com. That's I, M as in Mary, C-H-I-R-O, the number one, at gmail.com. Now, before we begin today's program, I'd like to alert our listeners to a programming change for the Chiropractic Corner. We have aired on WJUP Saturday and Sunday mornings right after the 10.30 a.m. news, but as you can see, we've moved to a new time slot. We're now on Friday mornings at 9 a.m. after the Dick Farrell Show, and then again Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Please make a note of it and join us at these new times for the Chiropractic Corner. Now on to today's programming. If you'll remember, last week we continued our discussion of functional medicine as we talked about the first consideration functional medicine practitioners have when evaluating a patient. What was that consideration? Well, it was the GI tract, a.k.a. the gut, a technical term. Dr. Volstad told us why the gut is so important to a patient's health and even described for our listeners an important condition of the gut found in patients who have chronic disease. That condition was called leaky gut. If you would, Doc, why don't you briefly refresh us with what it is and how it may affect a patient's health? I can do that, Laura. Leaky gut is a term used to describe a condition of the patient's GI tract where the permeability of the intestinal lining is changed. Hmm. Permeability, remember, means allowing something to pass through. Uh The lining of the gut then allows these things to pass through to the circulatory or the lymphatic system. And in leaky gut, more things are allowed to pass through than should be allowed to pass through. This then results in the body responding by increasing the activity of the immune system. When this upregulating of the immune system becomes chronic, the result then can be a chronic inflammatory response. And it's this chronic inflammatory response that may be involved in the development of chronic disease so many people are suffering from. You know, diseases like multiple sclerosis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and Sjogren's disease, just to name a few. And Doc, is there any way to feel this? I mean, can you feel inflammation in your body? How do you know you're inflamed? And not ask in the early stages of this inflammation process, you probably really are not aware of the fact that your body is chronically inflamed. Hmm. So there's no real symptomatic evidence necessarily of that. However, blood tests can indicate that your body is inflamed. There are specific markers in the blood work that can be ordered that can give us an indication of the status of the inflammatory response ongoing in your body. A classic example of that is C-reactive protein. So there are markers that can be looked at that can give us an indication as to whether there's inflammation or not. If you'd like more information about leaky gut, check out our last week's show, which is archived on our website. You can find our website by going to www.jupiterflchiropractors.com and then just click on the Chiropractic Corner tab on the top of our homepage. You'll also find all of our shows archived at that tab, so you can go right to the very beginning of the start of our program and catch every exciting episode. (laughs) That's on our website at www.jupiterflchiropractors.com. 
Okay, Doc, thanks. I would have drug you through the whole shebang again. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's get on with this week's program. This week, we want to continue talking about the functional medicine approach to restoring health and vitality, of course. And Doc, as we just mentioned, one of the first areas the functional medicine practitioner evaluates is the GI tract. I'm sure there are other ways of diagnosing a patient's condition, though. Uh, Can you share with our listeners what some of them are and how they are used by functional medicine practitioners in evaluating their patients? The important thing to remember here, Laura, about functional medicine is that the doctors who practice it use many of the same tools that conventional Western medical doctors do. We use blood tests, urine analysis, imaging tests like x-rays, MRIs, CT scans. Mm -hmm. We also do electrodiagnostic tests like EKGs, EEGs, and NCVs. And if you don't know what those acronyms stand for, just give me a call and I'll let you know. Oh, man, you're on to me now. You knew that was coming. (laughs) EEG is electroencephalogram, which is for the brain. EKG is for the heart. And NCVs is for nerve conduction velocities. Thank you. However, there are a few tests that functional medicine practitioners use that are not everyday tests used by conventional Western medical doctors. That would be things like epigenetic testing, saliva testing, and stool analysis testing. Now listen, I'm not saying that conventional Western medical physicians don't ever use these tests, but I would bet they don't use them very often, if at all. Another very important tool used by functional medicine practitioners and not so much by the conventional Western medical physician is the health questionnaire. So let's start with that. Okay, but I thought most all physicians used a history type of questionnaire. They don't? I thought it was a, is it a standardized questionnaire? Yep, it is SOP, Standard Operating Operating Procedure. Procedure. Truthfully, I'm sure they used They use some type of history questionnaire, but the health history questionnaire used by functional medicine practitioners is very, and I do mean very, detailed. Oh, it's not a standardized questionnaire that all practitioners use? No, it's a little bit more of a detailed questionnaire. For example, Laura, Uh the one I use in the office Mm -hmm. is 18 pages long. And Uh, you might ask, why so long? And the answer (laughs) is really, really simple. Functional medicine practitioners want a very detailed history of your health so as to be able to have all that necessary information available to make a correct clinical decision. There will be questions about your health history, your social history, your traveling history, um, your dietary history, just to name a few. And then there will be a checklist, kind of like the uh, conventional Western medical physicians use, where you can inform us of all of the symptoms and previous health conditions you've had. Wow, sounds like a, like the doctor wants your life history and then some. <laughs> Are we supposed to bring in the photo albums from yeah. our trip to Europe? I get, yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> right. They want everything about your life's history that you can remember. Wow, okay. What about blood tests? I'm sure everyone listening has had a blood test. Are the tests you need as a functional medicine practitioner different? And if, if so, how so? Well, the blood tests that I use are really very similar. The usual chemistries, the CBC with differential, these are commonplace. Mm -hmm. I think both uh, conventional Western medical physicians and functional medical practitioners uh, use those things. Uh, I think one of the main differences that someone may notice is the increased complexity of the blood tests ordered by a functional medicine practitioner. As an example... I've seen several instances where a patient has had a normal reading, Mm quote-unquote, of a certain blood test only to continue to say, hey, doc, I'm still having these symptoms. What's going on? That's me. Yep. Very commonly, though, there is no follow-up because the test is, quote-unquote, normal. Right. So the patient is shuffled to another physician who does the same thing. And it's no wonder people really get frustrated. Right. right. And this is the type of patient that commonly seeks out functional medicine. It's because they are so frustrated. Upon deeper frustrated, frustrated. I'm getting a little tongue tied there. (laughs) Upon deeper investigation, though, 
It's the functional medicine practitioner that discovers that the patient had issues all along but weren't discovered because the initial blood test was within normal parameters and no one thought it necessary to investigate more deeply. Isn't that a little misleading then? I know you know this has happened to me. You go in and all your um, indicators are within the normal range but you know something's just not right and it's like well sorry it's all says normal that's a lot of times the largest source of frustration that i've had patients say to me when they come in seeking answers is you know doc all my blood tests are coming back normal i guess my response to that would be well then i think maybe a little bit deeper of an investigation would be required let's see what other blood tests that could be potentially related i have to say and very commonly that's where you can possibly find uh, something that that sticks, that's reared its ugly head, and you can then use that to treat the patient. See, that's the thing that I think kind of threw me a little bit because I thought when those tests were run that that was the definitive test. There were no other tests to be run. A blood test is a blood test, but as I'm learning, you know, the panels are different. The things that you order, you know, can be different and. You know, I thought I was getting, a, you know, complete workup and excited because, okay, great. Now we're going to figure out this thing, and well, that didn't happen. that is an interesting comment, and I think what you have explained or expressed is a very common frustration that patients have. I also think that physicians get frustrated as well. Any physician who's worth their salt cares about their patient. And when the patient still has a problem, even though all the tests are coming back normal, I think that creates frustration for the physician as well. All right, moving on. What about uh, urinalysis? Well, that's another test that I did mention before. And mm-hmm. I think the urinalysis is one of the most overlooked tests available today. Why? Well, many, many situations can be discovered or made more clear by a urine test. Well, yeah. The key is to know what to look for. Certainly, the common tests like protein, blood in the urine, white blood cells in the urine, etc., are done by most all physicians. Mm -hmm. However, functional medicine practitioners will also use the urine test to look for hormonal issues, for example, or neurotransmitter issues, bone density issues, and there are others. These urine tests are specialty tests that most all laboratories do, and they are readily available through the functional medicine practitioner. The urine tests is a very useful tool, and it's probably undervalued in the treatment of chronic disease conditions. Who would have thought so much information could be gathered by just a urine test? Um, You mentioned saliva testing as well. I'd bet most of our listeners are furrowing their brow about saliva testing. What's that all about? Why don't you tell us a little more about that and how it's used in functional medicine, Doc? All right, I can do that. Saliva testing has become an integral part of functional medicine, in my opinion. Hmm. There are a number of important issues that can be made clearer by using saliva testing. I mentioned hormonal testing with urine. Well, Mm -hmm. that can be done with saliva testing, too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Saliva testing will give the functional medicine practitioner a little bit of a different take on the hormonal situation than urine testing. So very commonly, they're both done together. So... Do you think that would be important to a woman who's having hormonal issues? Hello. Such as maybe uh, menopausal hot flashes, etc.? Oh, boy. Yeah, I would think so, too. I would think she'd want every direction checked out to try and discover what the problem is as to why she's having these lingering issues. Oh, yes, she does. And thank you very much. We're going through that now. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, saliva testing can be helpful in determining the effects of stress. You know, stress can be very hard on our body. Mm -hmm. Just like leaky gut that we talked about last week being important to functional medicine, the consequence of chronic stress is another situation that is very important to the functional medicine practitioner in evaluating chronic disease conditions. What does stress do to the body? Well, Doc, we hear about that all the time. You know, people say, oh, you're just stressed out. Oh, you need to reduce your Mm -hmm. stress. But it's such a nebulous every man every day kind of catch-all thing that you hear what what is it really all about what does stress how does that detrimentally affect your your body and your health 
Well, that's a great question, but unfortunately, Laura, it's a very complex question. Of course it is. And it's probably too complex to take time to answer on just today's show. Maybe we can spend a show on that one, but Mm -hmm. we don't have enough time in today's show to really go into that. But I will tell you this. One thing that's very commonly affected by stress is the adrenal gland. How many listeners out there would say, you know, I'm just tired all the time. How many of us experience lightheadedness when we stand up from sitting or when we get up after lying down for a while? How many of these same then listeners would say they're under a lot of stress? Adrenal fatigue is a very common result of chronic stress. And one of the consequences of adrenal fatigue is the I am tired all the time syndrome. Hmm. In today's world, how big of an issue would you think that is? Huge. I'd say it's just ginormous. Mm -hmm. Stress resulting in being tired all the time. Um, Well, I'm sure a lot of our listeners can relate to that in some fashion or another. I know I sure can. Exactly. So if we can help demonstrate adrenal fatigue by doing a saliva test, do you think that would be important? Sign me up. I'd think so. And one more thing about adrenal fatigue. It's seen in many chronic disease conditions, and it's something that would need to be addressed in those patients. Sounds like there are a lot of good reasons to add these tests to the workup of a chronically diseased patient. Um, I think you mentioned several other tests earlier, of which one was stool analysis. Can we really get that much information about our health from a stool analysis test? Yep, we can. It's like a window to the intestinal world. Well, that makes sense. To help diagnose leaky gut, for example, that you know, like we talked about last week, mm-hmm. one could use a stool analysis test. If you remember, mm-hmm. we talked about food sensitivities being a major player in leaky gut. Mm-hmm. One very possible way of helping to figure out if a patient has food sensitivities is a stool analysis. Another example of how the stool analysis test can be helpful is how it can help us discover the, the status of the biome of the bowel. Oop, doctor word. Yep, very commonly patients that have chronic disease conditions will have a dysbiosis of the bowel, and here it comes. Two doctor words. All right. What's dysbiosis? And <laughs> uh, what was the other one? Biome. Biome. Biome is a term that's just used to describe the bacterial habitation in the gut. And dysbiosis Mm. is the term given to a situation where the bacteria of the gut are out of harmony. You know, too many negative influencing bacteria and not enough positive influencing bacteria. The term we use for that is dysbiosis. And Mm -hmm. by the way, that's why a lot of folks take probiotics. Oh, that we talked about last week. You know, that's worth repeating, Doc, uh, because we asked what type of probiotics you should be taking and where you get them. Well, that's a great question, and you're right. It's worth repeating. Lactobacillus, um, Mm. sarcomyces, um, to name a couple of them, and you can get them in yogurt, and you can get them in pill and capsule form Mm. at a a health food store. And Mm. they're very important to be taking as a preventative measure. You don't want to wait until you have a problem and then, oh, I guess I should be taking some probiotic. You can take them as a preventative measure to help your body keep this type of thing from occurring. Now let's get back to the discussion that uh, about testing that some functional medicine practitioners use, namely you, of course. Can do, can do. Just finishing up on the stool test, the stool test would be very important for a patient who has a parasite infestation or a fungal infection like yeast. Hmm. I think our listeners would be amazed at the number of people who have one or more of these types of infections. So how stirred up is the immune system? This is another finding the stool test can aid in establishing. You had asked me about this earlier. Mm -hmm. How do we know if our body is inflamed? Well, the stool analysis test can help us identify that circumstance. There are markers that can be found in the stool test that can help the functional medicine practitioner determine the level of the chronic inflammation in the body. You also mentioned epigenetic testing as a tool that functional medicine practitioners use, and there's another doctor speak word. Can you give us a brief description of what that is? And remember, Doc, we're getting close to the end here, so brevity is our friend. Okay, Laura, I get it, I get it, and I'll be brief. 
Epigenetic testing is a cutting-edge technology that takes advantage of the fact that the human genome has been completely mapped out. I think it was completed hmm. in the year 2000. Wow. In this test, really recent. the functional medicine practitioner is looking for variants or mutations in the genetic code of the patient. Coupling these results of the epigenetic testing with the results of the other tests performed, you know, like saliva testing, mm -hmm. stool analysis test, blood test, etc., the functional medicine practitioner can determine if part of the problem in the patient's condition is genetically influenced. And if so, this genetic testing can then direct the doctor as to what treatment would be beneficial. Epigenetic testing is relatively new, so not all the variants or mutations have been investigated. But of the ones that have been, there is one very interesting vari variant that I'd like to briefly mention. It seems that it's associated with autism. Hmm. How much is autism exploding in our world today? Uh, it's just giant. Further research has shown that in some of these cases, these patients may be helped with some relatively simple nutritional interventions. Really? Mm-hmm. They have this specific genetic variant, and they've seen that then these simple nutritional interventions have, in some cases, helped these patients with the autism. And this demonstrates how exciting and how potentially beneficial functional medicine may be in the health of our world. Wow, who wouldn't do that? Yeah, it's interesting that's to note. That's exciting. Stuart Kendall, MD, is a, a big pioneer in this work, and you can find his work online. Just Google his name. Wow, that's again, that's that is super exciting. Now, friends, if you think functional medicine might be an answer for your situation, we're here to help you. Remember, our address is two seventy five Tony Penna Drive, Suite Twelve, and our telephone number is seven four six forty two forty two. Another programming reminder, as I mentioned earlier on in our program, the times our show will air have changed. We have moved to 9 a.m. on Friday morning and 10 a.m. Saturday mornings. So please make a note of that change. Well, that wraps up another edition of the Chiropractic Corner Doc. Any last words before we give our tip of the week? Yep, there is, Laura. Like I said... Chronic disease is a food and lifestyle-driven situation that is influenced by environmental and genetic circumstances. New and different diagnostic approaches are required, like delving deeper into blood tests and utilizing saliva testing and urine and stool analysis, and then that new kid on the block, epigenetic testing. This new approach is utilized by our office and by other functional medicine practitioners' offices for the evaluation and management and treatment of chronic disease conditions. Functional medicine, then, uniquely integrates what is known about how the human body works, adding in the information gathered by the diagnostic te testing that we've discussed, mm -hmm. and then, with an individualized, patient-centered, science-based treatment plan, attempts to treat the underlying cause or causes of chronic disease. Functional medicine is indeed a healthcare system appropriate for the challenges of the 21st century. Well, thanks, Doc. Again, I'm, I'm hopeful that our listeners will take advantage of this new approach for their own benefit or for the benefit of a friend or a loved one. I hope so, too. Yeah, you've presented us with some exciting and hopeful avenues to explore for those who suffer from chronic issues. And it's that time for the tip of the week. You know, here in South Florida, we see coconuts everywhere. Who doesn't love a coconut palm? It is the quintessential sign that you have reached the tropics. But did you know that virgin coconut oil has many helpful uses? I didn't know that. Well, of course I knew that. I'm the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to share a few of those with our listeners because good, it's good. a huge list. I believe I learned in one of my horticulture classes from uh, Dr. George Rogers, who's the director of the horticulture department at Palm Beach State College. He shared with us one time that um, coconut trees have more than 160 different economic uses. That's that's amazing. More than any other tree just about on the planet. That's amazing. Uh, very interesting. And we are so lucky to have them down here right in our own backyards, literally. 
But here are just a few of the things that you can use coconut oil for. It's been used as a moisturizer. You know, uh, we've been told never to put anything on your skin you wouldn't eat. That's a good one to use. Uh, it's been used as a, you can use it as a hair conditioner, um, as an aluminum-free deodorant. And uh, we can tell you that that really works. Mm -hmm. Right, Doc? Mm -hmm. And um, use it as an aftershave. Even. Yeah, I imagine that coconut oil would feel very good on a newly shaved face. Yes, and newly shaved arms as well. It feels really nice. And use it as a sunscreen and with bug bites. It's been shown to be helpful in treating migraine headaches, fungal infections, gallbladder pain, menstrual pain and cramping, asthma, as well as supporting a strong immune system. We've even been told you should um, maybe cook with it, you know, uh, saute your... You know, it can vegetables. certainly be used as an alternative to cooking oil, mm -hmm. uh, as it is much more healthy for you than uh, mm -hmm. vegetable oil mm -hmm. and even olive oil, for that matter. Mm -hmm. We read a little bit last week also about maybe some weight loss benefits yep, of coconut oil. It has to oil. do with the type of fat that's in coconut oil. Right. It did get a bad rap there for a while, but new research has shown that it actually is a very good fat and would help you lose weight if used properly. You know, think about adding that to your diet. So the next time you see coconuts lying around, remember the helpful uses that coconut oil can offer you. Ah, well, that about wraps it up for another edition of the Chiropractic Corner. Uh, again, thank you for joining us and for all of your all of your input. Dr. Volstad and I would like to thank you for listening, and don't forget to let us know what questions you may have for Doc or topics you'd like to learn more about by emailing us at I, M as in Mary, C-H-I-R-O, the number one, at gmail.com. We're located at 275 Tony Penna Drive, Suite 12, right here in Jupiter. And our telephone number is 746-4242. We'd love to hear from you. Google Volstad Chiropractic to find our website for more information about our office or to listen to archived programs from the Chiropractic Corner. And coming soon, our show bloopers. For those on Facebook, please search and find our Facebook page and give us a like. We post a lot of information about health care and natural remedies that you can use at home. Join us next weekend for another edition of the Chiropractic Corner right here on WJUP, The Jupe, 103.9 FM, Saturday and Sunday mornings right after the 1030 AM news. Until then, be well, live well. We'll see you next week.